Hello there. Today we'll be talking about financial foolishness. <laughs> I tagged it Financial Foolishness 101. 10 things you should avoid at all costs. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dr. Yee, where I talk about wealth creation and financial discipline. I am Dr. Olaide Chinod. <music> If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, I know you are missing out. Why don't you subscribe right now and hit that notification bell so you get notifications every time I post new videos. Now straight to this chase. Number one thing to avoid, despising what you do for a living and what you earn. Many a times you hear people complain about what they earn and what they do. Like what kind of life is this? Is this a life I'm living? Eh? You keep despising yourself and you will never grow. Everybody started somewhere. Learn to stop despising where you are happy. What you do with your current state is what determines your future. You may be born to a poor family, but if you die poor, that's on you. Pick yourself up. Stop complaining. Learn the concept of financial discipline, which we are teaching you now. That little salary that you think is so little, so meager. Remove 10 to 20% of it every month and save. Before you spend anything on any wage or salary you receive, ensure that you save a percentage of it, 10 to 20%. I usually encourage 20%, but if you can't do 20%, at least 10%. And you're not spending this money to go and buy a TV. You're not spending this money to go and eat, to go and buy, 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 or buy one useless thing on the other. You're buying it because a business idea, an opportunity will surely come your way. And by the time it comes your way, if you have been faithful with this saving, you will have enough funds to plunge into that investment or that new business idea. But if you don't, you will say, hmm, how I wish I had money. Is it my time that you will have money to do this kind of business? Oh, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. Come off it. Learn the concept of savings and investment. You need to grab the bull by the horn. Stop complaining about the circumstances around your life. Don't complain. Do something about it. Number two, accepting this mindset that for you to be rich, you must steal. That is the mindset of a lazy man. Because you've seen a lot of people and you assume that when you see the rich, you assume that every one of them must have stolen money to get what they've gotten. You feel that every person that is wealthy now got it through ill-gotten means. Come off it and stop being lazy. What you have in your hand, what are you doing with it? Have you learned to maximize that which you have? You're still underestimating yourself. You're still thinking little of yourself. The majority of people are actually ignorant of what it is to be wealthy. They feel that wealth is something that comes in a day. It takes a series of deliberate, gradual steps. You need to be deliberate about your life. Learn the concept of delayed gratification. Do not accept this mindset that every rich person is a thief. Otherwise, you put or you shut down the capacity for you to create. Your creativity level drops. You are just a plain complainer. You complain all your life. Number three, you think what you earn is too little for savings. Why don't you just remove a little from that which you have and see what will happen? If you eat a fruit now, it's only a foolish person that eats the fruit and the seeds. There's always a seed in whatever food you have. Label your money. No matter how little it is, stop despising it. Set a little amount aside. A little amount. Don't spend everything. It is very expedient. You learn the concept of saving. It cannot be overemphasized. For you to get out of poverty, you must save. You must be deliberate. It's a decision you make. You must make that decision. Otherwise, your situation would not change. Leading me to the number four thing you must avoid at all costs. You think gambling is an investment? This is straight talk, right? I'm going to say it as it is. Gambling is for the foolish. True. No matter how you want to take it, gambling is for the foolish. You don't expect to gamble and call it an investment. It is blinding. It's a way of burning the little money you have. Now, you are gambling. You have no problem gambling, but you have problem saving. That money you're gambling, that 20, that 100, that 500, that 1,000 that you're gambling with, if you save it, hmm, you still have it and it can grow into something, but you underestimate it. You feel that gambling is an investment. A disclaimer, gambling will never be an investment. 
You might have known people that got wealthy from gambling, but they never stay wealthy. They drop back to the social flow. <laughs> drop back to poverty in a very short while. Do your research. Number five, you indulge in alcohol in the bid to kill depression. <laughs> As they say in Yoruba, Ofim <laughs> Paro Nure. You are a joker. Alcohol is not cheap. It's not for the poor. <laughs> but you indulge in it and you complain that you don't have money. The little you have, you indulge in spending on alcohol. This is pure foolishness. The little you have should be geared into saving and investing, building a future that you desire. You want your future self to thank you for being wise, not say, hmm, you made a blunder. Number six, you have more children than you can afford. You have this mantra, the Yoruba say that says, Allah alone told you more. If God is pregnant, your wife. You should learn family planning. Learn to plan your family. Be sincere with yourself. The essence of bringing children to this world is to replicate yourself, right? You want to give them the best, except you are an irresponsible parent. Why should you have children you cannot cater for? You see, or you hear of poor people who have three wives, 12 children. <laughs> Father Abraham, how do you intend to give them the best? Hmm? You have deliberately plunged yourself into poverty. You, it's, it's a never ending story. So you must learn to plan your life and plan the amount of children you want. Number seven, you always buy things on credit. Mm. You are waiting. I don't worry. By the time you pay me my salary, I'll buy it. <laughs> ah, this shoe. I like these shoes. By the time I get my salary, I'll buy it. But let me just wear the shoe. You plunge yourself into poverty that you will not get out of. Stop spending money that is not with your hand. Stop buying things on credit. Wait till you can sincerely buy that thing. Stop despising what you have. Look at your wardrobe. There's a parity law of vital 20. You use 20% of actually what's in your wardrobe. Yeah. Go back, look at your wardrobe. And try to clean those things. Mend your trousers or your shirts or your shoes. Instead of always buying things on credit. Buying resources on credit. Buying shoes on credit. Buying phones on credit. Can ever marry a wife on credit there? Number eight. You're waiting for that big break without developing or even owning a skill. You don't have a skill and you are praying to God to bless you. If God is going to bless you, He's going to bless you. He needs to bless the works of your hands. You must find yourself doing something. You must be a faithful workman, a faithful steward in something. You must be good at something. There should be a skill that you are building and you are built. Stand out in your generation. Don't just sit down there and be complaining in your life. You live a pity party around yourself. You are waiting for that big break. That might not come. Now, there are two kinds of people in this world. People that this world happens to and people that happen to the world. Why don't you happen to the world? Grab the bull by the horn. Look for problems around and find solutions to it. And after that, a bulk load of cash comes your way. It's as simple as that. Wake up, smell the coffee. Number nine, the first thing you do after getting the financial raise is to buy a liability, probably a car or a house. My people, why do we keep falling into the same mistake over and over again? I took a poll a while ago and I asked over 50 people that if 50 million naira is given to you now, what would be the first thing you would do? And you see people say, I will build a house, I will buy a car. That is foolishness. I'd rather you invest in a business, yes, that will fetch you more money. Build a cash cow that will guarantee you returns over and over again so that when you have enough money you can buy that car effortlessly you can buy a house effortlessly delayed gratification these concepts cannot be over emphasized stop pitying yourself because you don't have a car because you are trekking you feel that you are a failure don't do that buy a car when you can really effortlessly afford it you don't have to break the bank to do that because you will buy that car which is a liability and you go back to penury because even now this car needs to be fueled, needs to be maintained and you don't have that money to do that be wise number 10 you want to help all your village people regardless of your financial capacity now it's good to help but help people from an informed point of view be informed of your financial capacity know what you can do learn to say this easy word no i'm sorry i can't help you at the moment because i simply don't have the funds for it. I have heard of people who took loans to assist a family member. Are you kidding? You assist the family member and the family member is living his or her life and you have been plunged into debt. 
The bank or your creditors are after your life. They put you behind bars because you don't have the capacity to pay back. A lot of these problems are brought on us by ourselves. These things are completely avoidable. I said in one of our earlier videos that learn to understand who your liabilities, who your responsibilities really are. Label them and focus on them. And even with these ones, be sincere with yourself. You don't have to indulge every of their requests. Look at how much you have. Look at your budget. I'm sorry, I can't help you with this now. Let's delay this thing or let's look for another means of buying it or let's look for an alternative. You need to be smart with your finances. I would love to see this opportunity to talk about a book launch. The book launch. My wife will be launching her very first book titled Crush That Fair on the 3rd of December 2022 on Zoom. The time will be revealed later, much later, obviously before the launch. <laughs> In this book, she carefully talks about how she conquered fear, her own personal experience, telling stories about how to conquer fear. You would love it. It's a book you want to have. It's a book you want to read. It's a book you always want to make reference to. Why don't you click on that pre-order link in the description below to grab your copy now. If you just found this video interesting, I would have you like, share, post your comments, and don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till we meet again, same time, same place next week. And don't forget, health is wealth. Bye.